When you add up all the sleeping, eating, working, washing yourself and doom scrolling you have to get through in a day, there's barely any time left for getting through the towering pile of games you need to finish. Unless you find a surprising shortcut in a game that takes you to the ending, or at least an ending of sorts, in a mere fraction of the time. Job done, back to doom scrolling. Consider these time-saving techniques suggested by the commenters on our previous video on the topic, and do beware spoilers for the following games. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. The main perks of an office job are one, printing stuff for free, and two, cake when there's an office birthday. Both these benefits have gone out the window for office worker Stanley, the star of the Stanley Parable, when he finds himself inexplicably alone in his workplace. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? There's no one around except for a disembodied, all-seeing narrator who definitely won't be taking it upon himself to buy cake for the staff kitchen. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Also, none of the printers will do what you tell them, so good luck printing out your spec screenplay on the company's dime. Anyway, after emerging from the office in which he begins the game, Stanley progresses by complying, or failing to comply, with the ongoing narration. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Continue in this vein and he will achieve one of the very many possible endings of this experience, which vary wildly from going to heaven to total obliteration. I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Achieving each of these myriad diverse endings involve a lot of Stanley's primary skill, this being walking and each ending loops you back to the start of the game to try again. Better luck next time. And Stanley was happy. All of his co-workers were gone. If that's the case, says commenter Yvonne S, then why not save Stanley some time and shoe leather by opting for a much more convenient shortcut known as the coward ending. To end the game in record time with minimal effort, all Stanley needs to do is quietly close the door to his anonymous little office, thereby refusing to even take part in the meta-narrative weirdness going on all around him. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go anywhere except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. By noping out of the responsibility of decision-making, Stanley achieves the easiest of all these Stanley Parable endings, with no more than the usual passive aggression from the narrator. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Now, if someone could just slide a slice of cake under the door, that'd be perfect. Where is my sister? I saw her only a few days ago. I can assure you that she is in good health. Nothing will happen to her if you do as we say. The hero's journey of basically every open-world fantasy role-playing game is building yourself up from lowly scrub to mighty champion until you're mighty enough to beat the game's final boss. The hero's journey of fantasy RPG 2 worlds, however, can be as short as a casual country walk from your starting location to where the end boss is chilling out. The boss in question is Gandahar, a dark wizard if ever I saw one, resplendent in his death robes, menacing voice and giant evil shoulder pads. Hold. Who are you? My name is Gandahar. The message you received was from me. Right at the beginning of the game, Gandahar is kicking it just a short hike from your starting location. <laughs> This Sauron cosplayer is probably feeling pretty confident right now since he has a zillion health and your starter sword hits for, let's say, 10. And predictably, if you have a cheeky pop at Gandahar here this early in the game, you get owned on the spot. <laughs> However, if you leg it to the nearby village, dragging old Gandhi along behind you, the Dark Wizard's aggression will not go unnoticed by the humble locals. <laughs> These humble locals, it turns out, are more powerful than they look, or at least, more powerful than they looked before they rose up and collectively battered Gandahar like an evil piñata full of dark magic. 
In a few short minutes, these apparently immortal peasants will take Gandahar to pieces and, as commenter Starcourt notes, effectively complete the game for you. <laughs> Congratulations, you've not only finished two worlds, but also you've taught these villagers that the power to save themselves was inside them all along. Which, I guess, means you're out of a job. Be sure to hand your starter sword in on your way out. A puzzle game, The Witch's House, is about as wholesome as AI-generated images of human hands. That is to say, not very. That's not how fingers work. In The Witch's House, you play a girl named Viola who finds herself trapped in a forest. With her path to freedom blocked by roses, Viola has no choice but to enter and explore a creepy house in which she must do unwholesome stuff like cutting the limbs off a teddy bear, plucking a talking flower, and making friends with a nice frog. Who she then must feed to a giant snake. Nice one, Viola. Viola spends the game on the trail of another girl by the name of Ellen, who, judging by the diary pages left lying around the place, has been having a pretty dreadful time of it, suffering from, among other things, a deadly illness. The horrifying reveal at the end of the game, and I mean horrifying, is that prior to the start of the game, Ellen traded bodies with Viola, so you've actually been playing as Ellen all along. What's more, prior to the body swap, Ellen gouged out her own eyes and cut off her own legs, which is as viscerally upsetting as it is, presumably, logistically challenging. The proper endings of the game involve Ellen inhabiting the body of Viola, escaping the house and being rescued by Viola's father, who promptly shoots Ellen's original body not realising his daughter is inside it. Nice one, Dad. However, if you want an ending that is only implicitly horrifying and involves zero of the puzzle-solving efforts, then take a tip from commenter O Ninja, who notes that you can also win the game by doing literally nothing at all. Instead of entering the house, all you need to do is stand perfectly still for one hour. Maybe go have a long lunch. When the hour is up, then the magical roses blocking your escape disappear and you can simply walk to freedom, securing the knowledge that off-screen, the real Viola, trapped in Ellen's original body, has simply died of her injuries while you waited. Hooray? I realised the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse of which I had only a fleeting glimpse. The classic graphic adventure Mist is as enigmatic as it is 30 years old this year, and if you listen carefully, that was the sound of 90s puzzle game fans crumbling into dust. In the game, seen here in its modernised remake form, you are teleported to the island of Mist by a magical book of the same name, where you must explore its majestic landscapes to solve puzzles, acquire pages, and make your way towards one of the various endings. Your ending is determined by which, if any, of a pair of brothers you choose to spring from their respective book prisons, with one trapped in a red book and one trapped in a blue book. I guess neither is the official Mist strategy guide, or else there'd be no problem. You are also presented with a third book, which is your ticket to the best ending, since this one contains the father of the two brothers, who isn't a jerk, unlike his two jerk offspring. Who the devil are you? Now, you can either reach Book Dad by playing the game as intended, laboriously deploying your intellect to solve problems, or, as suggested by commenter Yu and Joe, you can look up the answers to two specific puzzles online and use them to complete the game in two or three minutes. In its original form, Myst's puzzles had static solutions, therefore the fast track to success meant starting the game, flipping a bunch of switches, setting the clock to 2.40, flipping another switch, obtaining a single page, going to the fireplace in the library, entering the fireplace pattern you already looked up, then clicking on the dad book. You did it! You completed Myst. Simply give dad your page to turn in your epic quest. And the page? Did you bring the page? Now all that remains is to kick back and enjoy the game's canonically best ending. It will mean nothing to you because you've bypassed hours and hours of manipulating random levers, dials and buttons, but it wouldn't mean a great deal more if you hadn't, because Mist is gonna Mist.
But never mind that, here comes the cash reward. In a reward. I'm sorry, but all I have to offer you is the library on the Island of Mist and the books that are contained there. More books, is it? I see. Okay, we're going to load up one of my favorite games here. Uh, here we have uh, The End Is Nigh. I'm not saying I'm easily pandered to, but when the protagonist of your game is a hardworking streamer just trying to create content, I'm emotionally invested from the get-go. So begins The End Is Nigh, the platforming action-adventure spiritual sequel to Super Meat Boy, in which player character Ash starts out by live-streaming a retro game to his audience of, oh dear, zero viewers. Hey, we all got to start somewhere. Turns out though, this retro game is as hard as an unripe avocado, and the first time you muck up on it, the game cartridge is irrevocably busted. Oh, oh no, 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 oh, f oh, f oh, god, no, this can't be broke. This leaves Ash to face the cold and equally hard reality that he's living in a post apocalyptic wasteland, which would explain the zero viewers. Ash sets out to literally make a friend here in the post-apocalypse, which is going to entail a whole lot more tricky platforming. Hours of it, in fact. The alternative, suggested by commenter Benjamin Curran, is simply to play Ash's retro game flawlessly and beat the entire minigame. No big deal. If you pull this off, the retro game never breaks, the stream is completed successfully, and so is the end is nigh, in less time than it takes to make a cup of tea. And there you go. Done. That was a lot easier than I expected. <laughs> Wait, a streamer that's good at games? All right, you've lost me. I can't identify with that at all. If horror movies have taught us one thing, it's to never open and close a mirrored bathroom cabinet. If they've taught us two things, it's that thing about mirrors and that cowards never prosper. In the same vein, survival horror point-and-click adventure Clock Tower offers you a quick and cowardly way to reach one of the game's endings, albeit at a cost. In the game, you play as Jennifer, one of a group of orphans adopted by a reclusive millionaire and sent to live in his mansion, known as the Clock Tower. Here, the corridors are stalked by a horrifying, murderous creature called Scissor Man. With nary a rock man to defeat him or a paper man to keep him busy, Scissor Man roams the halls looking for necks to snip snip. It is therefore shaping up to be a pretty horrible time at the start of the game when you arrive at the mansion, so who could blame Jennifer if she immediately collected the car keys and headed to the garage where the car is parked? As noted by commenter Miguel Gonzalez Del Pino, Jennifer will have some reservations about leaving her fellow orphans behind to save her own hide, but if you keep insisting that she cheese it in the car, she will do exactly that, leaving everyone else in the house to get murdered. Jen hops into the driver's seat and guns it, crashing through the barn door and hitting the road. So long, Scissorman, roll the credits. This would be an absolute result for not only Jennifer, but also for you, the labour-saving gamer, if it weren't for the comeuppance that arrives moments after. So, a bit of a downer ending, but an ending nonetheless. Let no one say you haven't finished Clock Tower. Technically. It is a high and lonely destiny to be the only 17-year-old who can save the entire world. Probably, it's too much responsibility for someone who doesn't wash their own socks. But such is the destiny of Isaac, the main character of Game Boy Advance RPG Golden Sun, whose day goes from bad to worse when his village is hit by a raging storm and destructive avalanche, then his dad is crushed by a massive boulder. It transpires that the storm was unleashed by intruders in the Soul Sanctum, a nearby dungeon where the destructive ancient power of alchemy, in the form of four elemental stars, had been previously sealed away for the good of humanity. After Isaac enters the Soul Sanctum with his teenage pals and gets this tutorial dungeon under his belt, he meets an alchemical guardian known as the Wise One, who charges Isaac with going on a quest to recover the elemental stars and save the world. At this point, commenter Marcus Oster notes, you can decide that young Isaac says no to his heroic quest, declining to accept responsibility for the fate of the land. 
If the wise one had been so wise, maybe he wouldn't have left that decision up to a teenager, but hey. At any rate, you're now free to leave the Sanctum, ignoring the Wise One's warnings, and so the game ends with a text box informing you that the apocalypse has begun and the world will definitely be destroyed. So, a bad outcome for the world of Wayyard, but a great outcome for you, the savvy player who has claimed back 20 hours of precious time. Think of all the things you could get done! You could watch all of the Fast and Furious movies back to back. For instance... Those were seven surprising shortcut endings for lazy players, as suggested by you, the commenters, on our previous video on the topic. If you'd like to see another commenter's edition, then why not check out this video from Outside Extra, which is about the terrifying sounds that uh, haunt us at night from video games. Or here's another video from Outside Xbox for one of our earlier good works. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox.